made your decision, have you? Well, yes, Dad. Uh, I couldn't stick around here any longer under the present circumstances. Besides, I figure we owe the Canadians a helping hand. But we're not involved in this war at present. We will be. I've taken that into consideration. You always have more consideration for strangers than you have for me or your mother. I wish you wouldn't continue to call her my mother. But her marriage to me makes her your mother. Well, let's forget it, Dad. I dropped your name when I enlisted. Why, Mickey, what's wrong? The lightning! Gary, I'm scared! Uh -huh. Don't tell me I have a brother who's afraid of a little storm. I am! Here, I'm going to tell you all about the lightning. Once there was a beautiful princess of the sky who was killed by a cruel god named Thormer. Yes, and then what? Well, there was a brave knight who loved the princess. So he went into the sky and asked Juno to help him. Go on. Juno made him knight of the flaming sword and gave him a thousand horsemen to help him drive the wicked god out of the sky. So you see, Mickey, there's nothing to be afraid of. Whenever you see the lightning, you just need to use the flaming sword. The thunder is the hoofs of a thousand horsemen driving the cruel god from the sky. Golly, that's a good story. He's a brave guy. And so are you. <laughs> Thanks. And now we're going to take off to bed. The propeller's broken. That would have been a real crank. The guy in it would have been killed. I'm afraid he would, Mickey. That does happen. They're brave, like that night you was telling me about. Yes, it does happen, and they are brave. Would you like to hear the aviator's favorite toast? Sure. Here's to the roaring motors and planes in the shell-torn sky. Here's to the men gone west today, and here's to the next man to die. That's a good poem. Will you learn it to me? Well, I will when I get back. You're going somewhere? Well, just for a little while. Mama's gone, now you're going. Well, but you have a new mother. But she ain't my real mother. I know, Mickey, but she loves you. And I want you to promise me one thing. You will always do just what she tells you to. I promise you, because we're pals. All right, it's time to go to bed now. Oh, no, no. Stay here until I go to sleep. Oh, no, you must go to bed. No, no, stay here, please. <laughs> stay here. Please. <laughs> Look at 
I'm telling you, those new motors they're turning out have the DTs. They're terrible. Well, Mickey Brune, you'll soon be a full-fledged flyer. I hope so, Sergeant Phelan. Well, you will, if you listen to Captain Horton, because he's one of the best flyers we have in the service. Well, that is, except you, uh, Sergeant Phelan. <laughs> well, you know, you know, that's true. <laughs> I remember the time when planes was first invented. Yeah. Wilbur Wright came to me and said he to me. <laughs> I now, suppose you invented them, huh? Well, no, not, uh, but I helped him. Attention! <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, men. Good morning, sir. The grades of your final meteorology examination will be posted after class. And this is your last day in ground school. It's my last day with you. Mr. Bruin. Mr. Michael Bruin. Yes, sir. Would you tell us what you think of the weather today? It looks pretty bad, sir. Bad? Is that all this course has taught you? Whether it's either good or bad? We should be able to determine accurately what to expect from the elements. But unfortunately, no matter how careful a student is, he might sometimes be caught. For example, electrical storms often occur without warning, in which case you'll have to rely on your judgment and experience. Now, I might add, of the 150 young men of your class who have been eliminated from training are unfortunately found uh, to lack the essentials required like an army flyer. But that's no discredit to them. Remember that. And remember this, that you still have two weeks of intensive training on the field before you take your final test. But I'm proud of you all. And I hope you'll win your wings and cherish them, and never forget that you're officers and gentlemen. Happy landings. That's all. Well, it won't be long now, Mickey. Horton is a great guy, Cecil, and we won't let him down. No. Remember, Michael Broom, you are now an officer and a gentleman.
Cecil Dunbar. You are now an officer and a gentleman. Happy landing. Oh, snap out of it, Mickey. You got a tough break, but listen to something. out with it. Tell me how sorry you are. Regrets, condolences. What are you waiting for? You're letting it get you, huh? What do you think? Ah, you're lucky to get out of it. Uh, you're just saying that to make me feel good. For years, I've made up my mind to wear those wings, and 10 days before I get them, I'm washed out. The instructor said I was flying mechanically, but I was flying, wasn't I? Oh, sure you were. You're a good flyer. The best I know. Hey, listen, you haven't forgotten your promise, have you? What promise? About going to the party at the club tonight. You know, the one that Raoul is giving for his sister Molly. I wouldn't take it too hard, young fellow. At least you're out of the service with a whole body, which is better luck than I had. Well, it's sporting of you to say that, McGuire, but I can't see it that way. I've lost my privilege of serving in the Air Corps. Sure, that's a tough break, too. Sort of breaks your heart. But let me tell you, Rune, that between a broken hip and a broken heart, you choose the latter. It doesn't last so long. You must have had many experiences during the war. I wish you'd tell me about them. One subject I don't care to discuss. Oh, uh, Mr. Bruce. Pardon me, sir. He had a terrible crack up during the war. Any reference to it upsets him. I understand. Well, important news from the ranch. I've got to get there right away. You stay here in San Antonio until I send for you. Will you forgive me, Joe, if I run along? Important business. Oh, of course, if you must go. I'll leave my sister in your care. Don't worry, I'll take good care of her. Good night, folks. Good, good night. night. Good night, Rose. Were you sorry you came, Mickey? Well, of course not. <laughs> if you'll pardon us, I have something to say to Mr. Brooks. Sure. What is it, Miss McGuire? Trouble? May I help? No, I'm afraid not. Michael. May I call you Michael? I wish you would. Or Mickey. Well, Mickey, then. Will you tell me about your brother who was killed in the war? Trouble is, we never heard anything definite. Dad never believed he was dead. All he ever told me was that he disappeared. I was only a kid then, but I worshipped him. You know, kid stuff. I know. I'll bet he was a great pal. That's why I was in the Air Corps. He was a great flyer. I can see him fighting a dozen ships single-handed. And if he's dead, I know that his spirit is maybe riding the skies alone. That's why I wanted to carry on. <sighs> you think that's a strange fancy? I think it's beautiful. And somehow, I know you'll make good. Mickey. I need someone to play Brave Knight for me. I'm worried about Raoul. He's become mixed up in something illegal. Criminal, I'm afraid. Well, what do you mean, Molly? I don't know, really. But something strange is going on at our ranch. Raoul has brought a number of hard-looking men to the place. One of them, Moran. I'm sure he's a criminal. Well, hasn't your brother told you about it? No. Obviously, he's trying to keep me here so I won't find out anything. And now the telegram. I've just got to get back. Well, I'm a pretty poor excuse for a brave knight, but I'm sure you're a princess. Would you like me to drive you? Would you? It's 300 miles, you know. When do we start? By the way. Your brother has a Spanish name, and you have well, a... Well, we're part Spanish. 
Then your name should be Dolores. Well, my mother was Spanish and my father was Irish. You know how the Irish fight. I look like my mother. And fight like your father? If I think I'm right, I do. Will you fight if I call you Dolores? Then you don't care for Molly? Oh, yes. I care very much for a certain princess. I'll get off at home. We live on this road about 10 miles out of town. I'll call you at Cecil's as soon as possible. You will trust me, won't you? Always. Well, we'll soon be there. Morning, Miss McGuire. Has my brother passed yet? About two hours ago. Thanks. Hello. This telephone, it, it was all right a moment ago, and now it's gone dead. I don't know what's the matter, senorita. If you're trying to get a connection, you won't have any luck. I just had the wire. What are you doing here? Well, I'm not a child. This is my house as much as yours. Why did you come back? Because I realized that something's going to happen. And just what is going to happen? That's what I intend to find out. You're being childish. Don't think I've been blind to, to your bringing this gang here. And all the secrets. I tell you, Molly, you're letting your imagination run away with you. There's nothing to fear. Then why did you cut the telephone wire? To prevent you from doing something foolish. Now, who were you calling? If you refuse to be confident of me, I must return the compliment. Very well. 